SCP-030. The Home Nucleus. Update class safe. Special container procedures. SCP-030 is to be held at Site-17 within a modified humanoid containment cell. Minor adaptions to accommodate its stature, such as an appropriately scaled workspace and chair, are to be included. Within the cell may be altered upon request of SCP-030 to a maximum of 2,000 lumens through a sample dimmer switch. Should the need to render SCP-03 in hurt arise, staff may extinguish the lighting from the exterior switch and draw blackout curtains as necessary. Standard night vision equipment is available for observation of SCP-030 in its inert state. SCP-030 may request materials for personnel research every 90 days. All previously requested materials are to be collected and destroyed prior to delivery of new materials. All materials are to be evaluated and screened by both research and security staff. SCP-030 is to be denied access to any modern scientific journals or texts, and fiction is to be restricted to works produced no later than 1623 CE to preserve the integrity of its innate knowledge. Staff wishing to consult with SCP-030 in writing are to place a formal request with the supervising researcher on duty. All correspondence is to be retained. Staff wishing to consult with SCP-030 in person are to submit a formal request to site management at least 30 days prior to their preferred consolation date. All consolations are to be recorded and retained. Senior research staff may request SCP-030 to be temporarily removed from its containment for a maximum of one hour to provide observational insight into non-restricted materials or events within Site-17. Under no circumstances is SCP-030 to leave the confines of Site-17. Requests must be presented in person to site management and security staff at least 30 days prior to their preferred observational release date. All observational release events are to be recorded and retained. SCP-30 may have been equipped with a tracking device, so its location within Site-17 may be determined precisely at any time. Description SCP-030 appears as a hairless, genderless, grey-toned human, 75 centimeters in height and weighing 12.70 kilograms. Its solid blue eyes like discernible irises or pupils and resemble small cut sapphires. SCP-030 possesses an androgenous voice with a pronounced English accent not currently identifiable as specific to any modern region. It is able to converse, read, and write in ancient Greek, Latin, Italian, English, Spanish, and Portuguese, as well as two additional languages that have not yet been identified despite zero threes instance that they should be common knowledge. SCP-030 has also demonstrated knowledge of physics, chemistry, astronomy, mathematics, and horticulture, roughly equivalent to that of the 17th century CE academic. In addition, SCP-030 has demonstrated knowledge on these topics along research lines that do not appear in the historical record. These alternative or entirely unknown approaches to research in the natural silence sciences of one source of SCP-03's utility in consolation. SCP-03 remains active while in 15 lumen source of light or greater is within 1.5 meters. In the absence of light, SCP-03 becomes inert, apparently losing consciousness and showing no outward signs of life. Within 5 or 10 seconds of being re-exposed to light, SCP-030 becomes active once more.
It appears to come out of a light slumber no matter how long the period of inactivity has been. SCP-030 does not appear to require these periods of inactivity as a human would require sleep, and has expressed the desire to remain active as, as, as often as possible. A biopsy analysis of SCP-030 remains inconclusive. While clays native to the English counties of Kent, Surrey, and Greater London make up the majority of its structure, traces of mandrake or mandragora lie. Mercury and human blood have been found in each sample taken. SCP-030 has expressed that a full exploratory surgery to determine its workings would potentially end its existence. Samples removed from SCP-030 do not regenerate, and sampling is currently discontinued to preserve its integrity. Although SCP-030 can be damaged, it does not appear to feel pain and will simply remold any portion of its anatomy that experiences de deformation. Notably, SCP-030 could not be molded directly by human hands, though any number of tools may be used to alter its surface. SCP-030 does not res respirate, requires no sustenance, and produces no waste, although it does infrequently request a bath. SCP-030 was it refers to itself as Ariel, and regularly requests that staff do the same. Questions regarding how SCP-030 was created and by whom are routinely answered with the seemingly rogue state. I have been asked to forget that bit of information. Terribly sorry. SCP-030 delivers this response in the same tone and cadence each time any question regarding its origins or creed are pre presented. SCP-030 was discovered on the 6th of the 12th during a mandatory archaeological survey with London's Mortlake District pending construction of a car park. It was buried approximately 2.7 meters below street level, contained in a small stone sarcophagus. The, sarcoph the sarcophagus bore no markings and was assumed to be that of a deceased infant as additional graves were discovered in the survey area. The sarcophagus lid was shattered during the excavation, exposing SCP-030 to daylight. Upon being struck by the sun's rays, SCP-030 rose from its inert state to one of mild activity within a few seconds, stating, Good afternoon, to the assembled construction team. A member of the Foundation's Greater London Recon Force was summoned within hours and took the specimen into custody without resistance. The limited number of witnesses were given am amnestics and released.